Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be taking a look at some backyard small game targets from Dinks. So I live out in the sticks and there really is no archery club relatively close to me. I'm about 45 minutes away and I've shot several of the square targets and target blocks and stuff like that over the years and I have had uh, a 3D deer target but what I've been trying to do lately is set up an actual 3D course. So the actual course I'll probably go over in another video once I get the thing up and established. Um, so I've got standard 3D targets. You see I've got a deer over here behind me. I've got small game targets as well. But to fill in the holes from the more expensive 3D targets, I found these two-dimensional targets. So this is maybe two and a half inch thick foam. Uh, I grew up shooting archery in the 80s and that was before they had the the McKinsey's and the round body targets. Now we always call these 3D shoots. And a lot of times it was just cut out deers and most of them are homemade. So this is kind of a throwback to me. This is a small family owned company in West Virginia. Uh, you can find these at Three Rivers Archery. Uh, Dinks has their own, it's Dinks Feather Shop. They have their own website. He was having some technical issues with his cart uh, at the time when I was ordering these, but you can get them directly from them. Uh, I've got several of them and I thought I'd show you the different types and how I use them. If this is the kind of thing you like to see, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me at Burning River Bushcraft on Instagram and Facebook. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. Just so we have a baseline here and we understand what I'm talking about, about a two-dimensional target and a backyard quality target. I'm going to show you a raccoon here. This is a three-dimensional raccoon, so you see it's got a rounded body. And this came as a kit. I got this and a groundhog, and they're about $75 a piece. And they're pretty big, they're pretty heavy, they're pretty darn durable. And if I had money to spend on a backyard range that I was really concerned with uh, long-term use, uh, this is probably going to be what I would go with primarily. I've got a few of these 3D targets. And just to fill in the gap so I don't have a two or three target 3D course, these little two-dimensional targets are a pretty good fill-in. Now you can see just the size of it. Uh, this is a raccoon. And they actually had glow tech eyes as well. So you could practice shooting this thing with a flashlight at night. Not even close to being the same size. Uh, that was about $75. This is about $25. And for my purpose, for what I'm trying to do right now, most of these Dinks targets are under $20. So I can have a deer or a turkey or a wild boar, a couple bigger key focal point targets, and just fill in the gaps with these things. So yes, it's not as realistic. And yes, you can only shoot at it from certain angles before it becomes a flat plane. But this is a pretty good system. So these are cut out and airbrushed, and they're all a little bit different, all a little bit unique. I kind of think it's retro. I like it. Uh, again, long-term use. I'm not sure how long it's going to last. I'll fill you in, actually. But I don't plan on pulling these targets all the time. Uh, the previous 3D target I had, I would set up when I would shoot it, and I would bring it in out of the weather. And what it was, it became such a pain for me to set it up, I would just practice on my square bale. So you've got like a grouse. He's got, uh, I've got a, a squirrel, almost the same size as the squirrel as I've got a half groundhog. So this would uh, simulate a groundhog sticking up out of a hole. I've actually got two of these targets. Uh, I've got the raccoon as well. So I don't believe the dinosaur is on three rivers, and I'm not particularly interested in hunting dinosaurs, but for a fun target for kids, you know, this is going to be awesome. This will work with my blowgun as well. Uh, you can shoot, you know, atlatls at this, arrows at this. So if you've got kids, just to keep them interested in archery, you throw a couple wild targets like dinosaurs, and that's really going to keep their interest. So you can find these on his website, or you can probably call him directly. I think his number is on his website. Uh, he has a, a fish as well as a turtle. So he's got a lot of uh, River's Edge type game. Uh, I plan on getting those in the future. So the biggest target I got was this turkey. And again... It is a two-dimensional turkey, so I don't have that rounded body. But there's a lot of detail in it. He's got a beard. I mean, this thing's pretty legit. But this is, uh, this is pretty high quality. This is heavy. I've got one setup that I've been shooting so far. I used the stake method I'm going to show you here in a second. 
because these do not come with stakes or any way to attach these. So I'm going to show you my technique for making stakes and how I attach these to these targets. And then I'll just set the course up and I'll just show some of these targets in action. So to stake these targets up and make them stand up right, I have oak dowels. So these are from Home Depot and the oak dowels are 36 inches. I'm going to cut these into nine inch pieces. Now, because this is a half inch dowel, I also have a half inch drill bit. We're going to start this whole process off by drilling two half inch holes in the base of the first target. So the placement of these stakes is going to depend on the target itself. I don't particularly want to go too close to the edge on this target because it flares out a little bit. So I'm going to get into the middle a little more. So probably about here and about here. And obviously I'm going to go dead center. I'm going to drill two half inch holes approximately right here. So I'm drilling this about three to four inches so I can just see the the length of the flutes on this particular drill. So I'm not really measuring, I'm not really putting tape on it, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So this foam doesn't drill super easy. I go slow and I don't force it. So now that I've got my stakes cut at nine inches, I'm going to have approximately three inches into the foam and approximately six inches into the ground. I've used multiple tools for this and you can use anything you got. You could use a knife, uh, a hatchet, it'll work just fine. Uh, because I've got my workbench here, this is the ultimate workbench, ultimate sportsman's workbench. I've got a course on this on outdoor core. I have a stand up shaved pony right here. So it's just as simple for me to use a draw knife and I can do a little bit better job. So you get the idea on this. It doesn't have to be too fancy. We just need a decent point on this. So I would have preferred to use metal for stakes, but I don't want to hit metal with my arrow. So this oak dowel is going to be hard enough. And I'm just going to put it in here and you can feel it seat pretty easily. Now, one thing I'm not going to do is just push on this thing and seat it unless the ground's super soft and it's not right here right now. So what I'm going to do is take one of my trap stakes, so take a rebar trap stake, pound it in, kind of wallow the hole out a little bit, and then seat this thing down and in. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the stakes for all the targets right now. Uh, when I actually place them in the ground and start taking some shots at them, we'll put the camera back on that. <laughs> So excuse the tractor running in the background, uh, I've just got the bucket on, so I've got all my gear in the tractor bucket just driving it around because I'm lazy. Uh, this is the Dinks Groundhog that I initially did, so this is the first one with stakes. And I'll show you the process of how I'm putting these up. I'm starting out with some rubber matting material, so you get anything, I just want to keep the weeds down. Now I know the weeds are going to grow up around them, but I don't want to have to come in with a weed whacker and get close to these targets and screw them up. So first thing I'm gonna do is just lay a rubber mat down. Uh, once that's done, I'll pop a hole in the rubber approximately the same width as the stakes, and then I'm just going to open up the hole with this trap stake. So once I get it in, I'm gonna open it up a little bit and then slip this down in, and hopefully it'll stay there for the whole season. So just because of who I am and what I like to do, whenever I set up an archery target right beside it, I'm going to have a steel slinger and I can shoot air rifles, I can shoot uh, rimfire rifles, as well as slingshots 
any of the steel reactor targets. So it's going to give me a pretty good comparison uh, shot to shot for small game and actual hunting situations with different types of weapons. So that's going to be my setup technique for these dinks. I do have other 3D targets I'm going to be setting up as well, but all those dinks are going to follow that same principle. I did notice after I shot that one and pulled it up, the stakes have a tendency to stay in the ground, which is fine with me. Uh, that way, if I do have a broken stake or something rots over time, I'm able to not waste the whole target by having it glued into place in the target itself. I'll show you some uh, some of these targets and how they react when they're being shot, how easy the arrows pull, and we'll probably do a follow-up video probably later in the fall. So right over here you see the raccoon target. So we'll see if I can hit it. I am maybe 12, 14 yards away. That was a low hit. Kind of got into my head a little bit. Let's see if I can get it this time. So the arrow's pulled out, no problem. I do put one hand on the target just to secure it as I pull it back. The way these sticks are, you're just not going to be able to really wrench on it that much. Uh, there are scoring rings on the target. I'm not that concerned with it. Uh, I'm looking at the animal and I'm saying if that was a broadhead, if that would take that animal down or not. So, good to go here. Uh, pretty realistic targets. I've got a turkey up next. And I think there's a squirrel after that. So, I'm not going to go through the whole course today. I'll save that for a future video once I get everything dialed in. But, uh, these Dink's targets are pretty freaking awesome for what you're getting. Uh, I've got turkey. And then right beside it there is a slingshot target just for fun. So these flat targets are not the most realistic target. I understand that. But this is about a third the price of a full bodied target. And for a backyard range like I've got set up right here, this is perfect. I'm hitting right on the wing butt. I have a circular kill, which is pretty decent. That's that's a legitimate kill zone. So these are really awesome targets, especially for the money. Uh, everything doesn't have to be you know super big and super fancy. This looks like it's shooting a turkey instead of just shooting a square block. Uh, instead of having hay bales with paper targets stapled over them, I'm able to move the target or move myself to keep this fresh. So definitely look into getting some of these. It makes a great way to supplement your practice and to keep things interesting to make you go out there and shoot and practice more. And again, these are available directly from the manufacturer, which is Dink's Feather Shop, as well as Three Rivers Archery. So until next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon. Mm -hmm.